G'day guys. This week I've been out on an expedition searching for one of the five critically endangered lemurs of Ranamafana National Park, the black and white ruffed lemur. Normally, this would be a pretty difficult task, but luckily there's already a team of researchers out here at the Mungavu campsite inside Ranamafana that have been studying this species for the last year or so. Professor Andrea Baden from Hunter College, New York, and her team are working tirelessly to gain a better understanding of these critically endangered lemurs. They're collecting all kinds of information. They're monitoring the lemurs' behavior, taking nutritional data, their breeding habits, they're even collecting their droppings. It's a lot of work, but it's really important stuff. The more that we know about these lemurs, and about any species, the more we can do to save them. Now though, let's find out about the largest lemur outside of the injury family, the black and white rough lemur. Aren't they just gorgeous? The black and white ruff lemurs get their name from, funnily enough, the colours of their fur and the large white ruff that surrounds their face. They grow up to about 50 centimetres or just under 2 feet long, with their fluffy black tails also being another 60 centimetres or 2 feet. They have striking yellow eyes which stand out against their black face. They are mostly active at dawn and dusk, using those times to travel through the forest across larger branches. Their strong legs allow them to leap great distances from tree to tree. They'll spend a lot of their time during these periods feeding on some of their favourite foods, mainly fruit, seeds, leaves and nectar. Fruit holds a particularly special place in the heart of these lemurs though. It's thought that 75% to 90% of their daily diet consists of fruit. This will vary though depending on what's available at the time of year. One of the black and white rough lemurs' favourite pastimes though is grooming, just like this adult female here. Grooming is an important part of a lemur's daily routine. It helps them make sure their fur is nice and dry, helps remove any creepy crawlies that might try to attach themselves to the lemurs, and generally helps them make sure that their luxurious fur is clean and free of anything that isn't meant to be there. Lemurs that are unable to groom effectively tend to have a much more difficult life. Grooming plays such a big role in the life of the rough lemur though, and in fact most lemurs, that they've managed to evolve a very specific tool to make it easier for themselves. The teeth in their lower jaw look pretty similar to an everyday item that we humans use. Over time, the lemurs teeth have pushed together to resemble a hair comb. This helps them to groom themselves to the very best of their ability. When it isn't dawn or dusk, the black and white rough lemur will spend most of its time resting high in the trees, hiding from the hot Malagasy sun. When you manage to finally find one of these lemurs though, it's not an uncommon sight to find them lounging around exactly like this guy, with all four limbs just dangling from the tree. As they hang, flies try to land on the lemurs and get a quick bite in. Those shuddering motions of the lemurs legs are their sleepy versions of shooing them away. There are a couple of things that make this lemur species really special though. One is they are one of the few primate species in the world, if not the only one, that builds nests purely for breeding and infant care purposes. The nests are made from sticks and leaves and hidden up in the trees between 10 to 20 meters high. These allow mum to go off and forage without needing to worry too much about the kids, and after only four months the babies are almost fully independent. But the other really cool thing about the black and white rough lemur is they hold a remarkable title. Thanks to their special relationship with the traveller's palm, they are in fact the largest pollinators in the world. The lemurs have the ability to open up the traveller's palm's flowers and gain access to the nectar thanks to their long snouts and tongues. While feeding, the pollen from the flower sticks to their face, which they then bring with them to other traveller's palms they feed on, where pollination occurs. This gives them a really important role in the ecosystem of the forest. This girl here is Red, affectionately referred to as Tauriel by Professor Baden's research team. She's one of 37 black and white rough lemurs being monitored within the survey site. They can be identified by their collars and the coloured dog tags that are attached. 29 individuals have been fitted with radio collars, helping the research team find their lemurs deep in the forest. We followed Tauriel one day while out in the forest as she clambered around searching for some of the black and white rough lemurs' favourite foods. 
I mentioned before that these lemurs are mainly frugivorous, but at this time of the year, there is something special that comes into season. For the duration of October, a special flower blooms and the lemurs feast on them. We were told that if you found one of the Natudabu trees, you will normally find a large group of black and white rough lemurs as they converge on these sweet flowers. Tauriel has managed to find a couple of these treats that have been missed on this tree. She makes short work of the white flowers, moving on quickly to find the next. With a food this yummy, she wants to make sure she gets as many as possible. Tariel wants them so much, in fact, that she's actually moved far into another group's territory this morning. Luckily, it's proved to be a fruitful morning for her. She takes a moment to watch as a small ball of fluff floats past her before moving on, searching for more of her favourite flower. Isn't she a gorgeous animal? Black and white rough lemurs face a range of threats. As with so many species across Madagascar, deforestation is one of the biggest. Logging, mining, agriculture and other developments are seeing the rainforests that they call home disappear. Sadly, as humans encroach more and more upon these forests, the black and white rough lemur is one of the first to disappear. Because of their diurnal habits and their large size, they're a favourite target for hunters. This has seen the black and white rough lemur become the most hunted lemur species in Madagascar. With this in mind, their presence in protected areas like Ranamafana National Park becomes incredibly important, and it's through the work of teams like Professor Baden's that we can hope to save these gorgeous lemurs. While these lemurs are found all along the rainforest of the east coast of Madagascar, the habitat and the areas the lemurs are found are becoming increasingly fragmented and isolated. This footage was shot during the 22 kilometer or 13 mile hike out to Mangevu and highlighted the very real presence of deforestation and slash and burn agriculture in areas surrounding the national park. Conservation organizations are at work all along the range of the black and white rough lemurs though, with reforestation projects doing everything they can to reverse the trend of the disappearing forest. Education is also key to try and reduce the hunting rates. Working together, there is no reason that we can't succeed in saving the black and white rough lemur. As always guys, raising awareness is one of the best ways that we can help play a role in saving the species. For those of you watching at home, Go and have a conversation with a friend or a family member this week about the black and white rough lemur. Tell them what was the favourite fact that you learned in this video. For those of you watching it on social media, please like the video, tag a friend or two, give us a share. It all does make a difference. Otherwise, go check out your backyard or your local park. There is wildlife all around us, all the time, more than you realise. So get out there. Get wild, and you never know what you might find. Thanks for joining me guys, and I'll see you next time.